So I presented a talk on a strategy for imaging women at increased risk for developing breast cancer. And it was primarily for women who have a greater than 20% risk and primarily uh, BRCA mutation carriers, but also women who have been exposed to radiation therapy at a young age affecting their chest, uh, women with a strong family history, some women with a, a personal history. So I start by just discussing various uh, strategies in terms of imaging, uh, the types of imaging that we routinely do for normal people, and then the supplemental imaging that we recommend for women who are at higher risk, particularly those women who have dense breasts where you can mask a breast cancer. And then I also looked at the nuances of the types of cancers that women with different risks get and the rapidity of disease developing in different populations because as we look at those differences, it also affects the way we use the imaging modalities. We start with the basic mammogram. Uh, however, in the United States, digital to, uh, or tomosynthesis is actually becoming the routine screening mammogram. We call it a better mammogram. Now, throughout the world, that's not necessarily true. So when we start talking about the supplemental modalities, I look at them as being better anatomic modalities. And then another subgroup are women who have vascular imaging or physiologic imaging as a different way of doing supplemental imaging. So the anatomic supplemental modalities are still considered tomosynthesis, but as I said, that's often our baseline, um, and screening ultrasound. And then uh, when you do those studies, it demonstrates that you do detect additional cancers, 1.5 to 2 per thousand for TOMO, and approximately 3.5 per thousand for ultrasound. However, in these women with, with the higher risk, we find out that even after doing both of those studies, we're still missing about 45 percent of the cancers. And so looking at a better way of looking at the breast is a vascular study, which primarily has been MRI, and MRI uses contrast, and the contrast will enhance the new vessels that are developed when there's a cancer, and you can sometimes find a cancer before you can actually see a real mass. And MRI finds approximately 97% of all cancers. That has been standard of care in addition to mammography since 2007, the American Cancer Society guidelines. Another newer technology is called contrast-enhanced mammography, and that's newer, and uh, we're just beginning to demonstrate that it, too, can find 16 cancers per 1,000 people. MRI is great, but it is very expensive, uh, particularly in the U.S. In Europe, it's actually not. It is something that's really not available everywhere, you know, for those of us who work in fancy medical centers on either coast, affluent communities, it's fairly easy, but there are places where there is limited or no MRI capability. One option is to do shorter MRIs, they're called abbreviated MRIs, and that has been demonstrated to be an equally good modality, and you can do two or three MRIs in the same time as a full one, in which case you can make it cheaper and you can do more patients. There are problems with MRI in terms of the gadolinium. There are some data that show that you set, see gadolinium deposits in the brain in women who've had multiple MRIs. And although it has never been demonstrated to damage the tissue, patients are concerned. Um, so for those reasons, one has to look at other possibilities, although I still think that MRI is the best way to evaluate women once a year. But contrast mammo is one-tenth the cost. It is something that you can do. You can um, do hardware and software additions to a regular mammography unit if it's a new enough unit, and you can do a larger number of patients. Uh, so that offers another option for patients who either can't have an MRI, who don't want to have an MRI, or don't have access to it. Um, 
the other thing I talked about is that when women have mutations, particularly women with BRCA1, their, tum their tumors grow very quick. And the recommendation is to image them every six months. One study from Chicago demonstrated that if you did two MRIs a year, then you found all the cancers were under a centimeter, node negative, and really shows that that's really the right thing to do. But it is unlikely our insurers are going to pay for it. And it is also difficult for our patients. They don't enjoy the experience. So one of the things I've suggested, and can be, uh, and, and the mammogram doesn't, doesn't really find a lot of cancers. So contrast mammo is a nice alternative. So you can do contrast, six months later, MRI, six months later, contrast again. Now, if you don't have contrast, we're still kind of left with doing the mammogram, even though we know it's actually not going to do us a whole lot of good. I, I actually um, showed a study that um, the abbreviated MRI study, there has been a big national trial that is about to be published. And this is really co um, comparing MRI to tomosynthesis in women with dense breasts. But it demonstrated that abbreviated MRI showed 143% more cancers than tomo. Um, there is also a trial that was just published in the New England Journal. And again, these aren't so much mutation carriers, but also just shows how good the technology is in women with extremely dense breasts in the Netherlands. They've, uh, they've started a study of over 40,000 women, and they're going to do four sets of imaging, three analyses, and the first analysis was just published in the New England Journal. And they were looking at cancer detection rate and also interval cancer rate, because an interval cancer comes up in between screening. And those are usually bad signs that you're developing a cancer that could cause a more serious disease. And what they showed was that by, in the women who were not offered an MRI in this trial, because it was prospective randomized, um, they had an interval cancer rate of five per thousand, which is pretty well documented. If you offered them an MRI, it was 2.5 per thousand. If they actually had the MRI, it's 0 0.8 per thousand. When they looked at cancer detection rates, MRI found twice as many cancers as the mammogram. And then I also discussed the fact that for contrast mammo, we're beginning what's called the CMIS trial, which is going to compare contrast mammo to tomosynthesis plus screening ultrasound in women who have dense breasts. So those are the newest trials. The, um, all the other data were pretty new to begin with. You know, I think it's a really important field. I think the earlier we find the cancers, we've demonstrated with using MRI uh, in mutation carriers that we have improved overall survival. It's slow and it takes a while to prove that, but each piece of data demonstrates that we're not only improving survival, we're reducing the morbidity of the cancers these women do get.